down. We'll just get a confirmation as we do see our players, Jan Fischer, who's yeah. playing on our right hand side there. A top 16 from Orlando and a top 64 at Utrecht. And Jan is going to be playing the Roaring Moon EX oh. as well. So there aren't many floating towards the top, but Jan has managed to make it there. And he's coming up against Bartosz with the Maridon Iron Hands. We get a chance to see both in action now. We wanted one, <laughs> yeah. but we're getting both. The this full is, this variety. is it. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. It's a pretty interesting matchup. Both are going to be at it full tilt, mm -hmm. I think. We're going to see yeah. four turn games, you would imagine, in most situations, if we can make it all come together. So it's going to be a showdown of electric generators and Flappy versus the Sada and Dark Patch. Mm -hmm. When the other player can weave in Iono, that's going to be critical as well. Can we see a single prize Pokemon get into the mix to reply to Frenzied Gouging? Can we see any damage from other single prizes from Yan's list? These are going to be the intricacies of this matchup. But at its core, we're going to be racing. Yeah, we're going to see so many different little, <laughs> not as many intricacies. It's just going to be, can I take this knockout this turn? And can you respond? <laughs> so we're in for a hell of a match here. So let's see how both of these players are going to be able to take down one another. Because, of course, it, as you mentioned, there's, there's small little things you could do, but they both have an, a game plan. They both have generally, you know, we're just going to take big knockouts here and there. How does this matchup typically go, Joe? Well, I mean, I think there's intri there are intricacies, I think, genuinely, yeah. because there's the likes of the Bravery Charm, where you can push oh, your yeah. uh, roaring or your Lightning Pokémon out of Roaring Moon range, forcing them to use Frenzy Gouging, and that allows you to weave in a single prize Pokémon or use Iron Hands for a free prize knockout, which can be huge. Uh, huge. Bartosz is playing the Path of the Peak build as well, similar ah. to uh, Yuho's winning list, the Masters Division winning 60 from the LAIC. So there are some defensive plays available in their list as well. So these are things that we have to uh, keep an eye on. And of course, <laughs> it's the winning in. You can see the records there, both on 5-0-1 records. So a win puts them in. Let's get game one underway with Bartosz here, who has started with Zero Aura. Yeah, both players starting fantastic opening cards there. The Mew and the Zero Aura offering free retreat. But lots of different ways how this game plan can go out. Bartos hasn't immediately benched the Maridon, however. We said it was going to be speedy, but uh, <laughs> I think we've oversold it. I'm not seeing too much in terms of what's going on in this hand. Having to bench a single prizer just to make sure there's no instant KO and instant win here on Jan's first turn. But Bartos has an option to just attach the energy. Yeah, onto the Pokemon Go Zapdos. Can be an attacking threat, but doesn't deal a huge chunk of damage. So we were expecting fireworks. It's not come from Bartosz here. Let's see if Jan has a better time. They're kicking off with the Battle VIP pass. I think I saw Water Energy in there as well. I'm just going to grab their deck list to see if they have the option to use Radiant Greninja. Not ideal mm -hmm. on this board state, but it can be a great way to weave in single prizes if necessary. We did see the Radiant Greninja um, be prized, though, ah. um, on Jan's side. So he'll be able to go through this deck from this deck search to just identify that nice and early and then just try and identify which way and which route he will take here. It is Advantage Ancient right now. Yes. Um, as Iron Hands currently hasn't seen the light today and is not on the board. I think we're seeing a Squawker Billy spied early as well as a Roaring Moon. There's a couple energies in these hands, so it would be a perfect way to discard a few early, open up your Professor Sada. I think there's Ultra Ball in here as well, so this is a really good start uh, for Yan here. Getting rid of one water. There's, of course, a colorless attack cost in Roaring Moon's uh, Calamity Storm and Frenzy Gouging, so you're pretty happy to play these Water Energy. Gives you more flexible plays in the opening stages, and a second Roaring Moon getting developed early is exactly what you want to see here. You're setting your stall out and making sure that you've got these bulky uh, Roaring Moon available and ready to go. Yan is playing the Ancient Booster Capsules as well in the deck list, um, so we'll be able to buff up one of these Roaring Moon before using a Squawk and Seize here. Yeah, another vital card in the Roaring Moon deck, just to kind of give additional HP, not allow it to be affected by special conditions. Really, really cool card. Kind of pushes it up to, is it 290 HP? Just the 290 there. Just yeah. the 290. That's on a basic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I mean, it's another way to kind of try and mitigate the frenzy gouging. Um, HP sort of lowering. Still not perfect, but it helps in other matchups as well. Does still have that Calamity Storm Oof. attack. Well, it's, an a, it's an ugly hand Ooh. to draw from Squawker Billy. It's going to be a dark patch, but I don't think we're able to attack here. Didn't see any Sardas, so it might still end up being a pass. This might be a window for Bartosz. Second Ancient Booster mm -hmm. Energy Capsule coming down onto the field. 
It's just going to be a pass, so that's a huge sigh of relief. Let's see the top deck here. It's a oh. lightning energy. It's not what we're after. Does have a Forest Seal Stone in hand, but no V Pokemon available to attach it to. This hand does not look pretty at all. Just the boss as a supporter. Try yeah. and maybe slow down Jan's side of the field. You can bring up the Roaring Moon without any energy attached and hope that causes headache for Jan, but it's really not ideal here. We are going to see an electric generator. It's low odds because we haven't thinned the deck of many basics, and there's not a great target in Zapdos, but here we are. I think at this stage, even just trying to thin the deck of energy yeah. so that you can top deck some supporters is the reason for this uh, generator. It does find a lightning energy, so there can be some damage being put into play here. Actually, with boss's orders, you could turn attach and take a two prize KO on Squawker Billy, so, yeah, so <laughs> even with a slow turn, you could be initiating this prize race. Yeah, that's and that could be massive, right? Just being able to push ahead and just leave two single prizes down at the moment. We'll eventually need to hit into something like the Maraidon and start building the board <laughs> and being able to retaliate. Um, but for the time being, definitely eyeing up those two prizes. And I just think you have to. I, I always joke that Maraidon's draw engine is prize cards. <laughs> because <laughs> this is what you get attacking so early. And here we go. Bartosz has found the line to take a two prize KO. And it's on the Squawker Billy EX. A fantastic hit from the electric generator and suddenly they've initiated the prize race yeah. and forced a single prize knockout from Jan as well because of how the board has landed. Mm -hmm. First two prizes with that electric ball attack from Zapdos. <laughs> Not what we had expected. Picked Does up have ultra an ultra ball from ball prizes as well. That's, that is huge. <laughs> I think it was a Raikou as well, yeah. so it has the Forest of Stone, has everything planned out. This is going to work out swimmingly. And it's just on Jan now to try and retaliate back. But yep. The turn attachment uh, doesn't get there because you'd have to frenzy gouge through the Zapdos if you want to KO it. You could just hit it for 100 damage, though. That is the base damage output. Not ideal. Oh, it's frenzy gouging. He's going to damage himself. Oh. He's going to deal 200 to himself. The value in this is probably not ideal. <laughs> it's, he's trying to keep up in tempo. But my goodness, this does not feel great. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted a quick back and forth, and this is what we're getting. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> All basic energy in the hand. A Radiant Greninja is a good prize uh, for Yan, though. This is a, a really strong hand now. This is how it's turned completely with that Ultra Ball and Raikou pickup. It doesn't take much for the Maridon to get rolling. And the Forest Hill Stone could grab a supporter. Ultra Ball could grab Maridon. Maridon can unit out the entire gang. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, we've got a pretty well-established board here. And that could be a real swing. I think, ideally, we even see if there's a lost vacuum that we could yeah, find. You could speaking. turn attach to the Zero Aura and finish off <laughs> its Roaring Moon with one energy with the Battle Claw of all things. 30 damage, perfect. Oh, that's dangerous. There's a lost vacuum <laughs> able to take it down. And just being able to take four prizes with two single prizes. That would be insane. I mean, how has this happened? This <laughs> we were despairing Where's for Bartosz. <laughs> Where is Iron Hands? <laughs> Show me. No, not even required here. There's going to be the Ultra Ball, uh, the tandem unit, I feel like it's going to be at least a Mareep. Could even be another Maridon and carry on the chain here. I mean, it could happen, right? He's got Forest Sealstone in hand. Yeah. So you can just grab it. It's, you can it's, grab it's, it's, the Lost Vacuum. I think just the way the hand maps, though, you probably want to grab a supporter. You could draw one card with Fleet Footed, though, and free up your hand. A couple of options available. There's, there's, there's a lot of things you can do here. A, a lot of weird options we not typically would, 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 would see in this kind of matchup, but... This opens a lot of doors. Equally, you could just attack the Roaring Moon and hope the opponent can't switch cart as well. You mm -hmm. could just have the um, vacuum for later. Could be an option. It's going to be a second, the yeah, the second tandem unit. Or the Raichu possibly here. No, it's going to be a fail search from the second tandem unit here. Ah, oh, man, so many options here. Just wanting to... I want to know what's in Bartos' head right now because he, he could swing for just that battle claw. <laughs> And I'm here for it. We're going to see, it looks like an electric generator, which is why we've shuffled, shuffled the deck here. Mm -hmm. And the last card is that Forest Seal Stone, right? Yeah. So we'll see what's what from this generator. We don't necessarily need to hit, but we do find one lightning at least. And it is just going to be the one. Just I the like loading up the Raikou just in case. Just the two out of four lightning energies from two electric generators so far. Let's keep that counter going, the yeah, whole series. <laughs> well, I can't remember it now. There's, Put pressure on me. Yeah, I mean, people ex think that this deck's all about the generators, but it's really about working around these cards and trying to put yourself in a position of, you know, trying to get lucky at times, mm -hmm. sure, with generators, but also having contingency plans the whole time. And that's why we've seen Bartosz hold the Forest Seal Stone to see the outcome of this generator before committing to their V-Star power here. 
Yeah, and it so looks much. like zero card hand means it's going to be the research rather than the vacuum, because, of course, it would need a target <laughs> to do anything with. Well, it needs energy on the active as well. Yeah, that's also true. Game. But, yeah, let's just iron up a supporter here just to kind of keep the deck going. You know, I guess Arvin you'd... would be interesting. You could go Muex or something like that with Nest Ball, but I, surely research just seeing the most cards here makes the most sense. Yeah, I mean, that, maybe that's why they left the space available on the bench, just kind of keep those options open. But, I mean, there's so many different avenues. This is where it gets a little bit muddied. Uh, you don't even need to attack this turn. That's what's crazy. <laughs> like, honestly, you can just leave Zera Aura here. We're talking about all these incredible avenues, but... You know, you're still on the attack race looking pretty good, even if you do nothing this turn. There it is. You're right. The big professor's research for seven fresh cards here. If we can see the lightning energy plus the vacuum, it would be monstrous. Just one more card. It's another energy. Just another energy. More generators in the hand as well, I believe. We've got a fleet footer potentially, as it looks like the Raikou is getting into the mix. It makes sense if you don't have the vacuum available to you, mm -hmm. you want to take the guaranteed knockout because otherwise you, it could get switch cart and denied. Raichu coming down is also helpful because obviously we'll have to try and take big knockouts potentially with that ancient booster capsule on the bench Roaring Moon as well. Doesn't want to, of course, play a stadium if he did hit one. Ooh, the double hit on the third <laughs> generator. I like spreading this across probably both Maridon, honestly, at this stage trying to keep that Raichu available. Mm -hmm. Possibly one on Raichu, one on Maraidon solid here. You know you've got your knockout secured with Raikou already. You did see that just lost shuffle vacuum up. in that, in that yeah, generator. Yeah, it was there. close. It was close. I mean, there's still that more squishy Mew EX on the yeah, bench as well. Yeah, you could also well. just slap... Oh, wow, oh, two onto the Raichu. Committed. That puts you boss attachment away onto the Mew EX as well. Oh, really dangerous. So much going on. Nothing what we expected, but I think Ultra Ball in this hand as well could get you that safeguard of Mew EX, which is looking fantastic. We see it come yeah. down. Yeah, it feels like Mew EX is the perfect card for this situation where you're going ahead. Oh, we're already at the full bench. Mm -hmm. Okay, it could be Flaffy for next turn. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it's just... Oh, it's going to be Flaffy for the next turn. It's been tandem united this turn, mm -hmm. so we can't evolve up, but we're looking in pretty good shape here. Yeah, we're I believe the position. last card in hand is research now, so we're looking pretty happy with this. We have fleet-footed as well. Oh, again, just so many little things. I, I gave it a disservice. Oh, hang and on. That Flappy that can't Flappy. be used because the Marik was down this turn. We know that much because on the previous board, it was just Zero Aura and Zapdos. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make sure that we can try and stop that uh, from activating because that's uh, not a valid strategy right now. You can hold the Flaffy for next yeah. turn. Flaffy could just stay in hand. That's not a problem yeah. at all. Yeah, we're all good there. There you go. We That'd can freely retreat, get that fleet-footed card, and then still go up to just uh, yeah, up four prizes with just two remaining. Charm. Bravery Charm could protect your Raichu as well. It's Ooh. just going to be held, though, for the KO with the Lightning Rondo. Bartosz in a really commanding position from not having much of a board last turn. Now look at the stark difference from just having <laughs> the Zero Aura in play, and that was it. And that is the power of the tandem unit. Just being able to take that knockout with that sat thus has made it a huge difference in yeah. this game and just swung it completely after an almost terrible start. And now it's just looked like... And it's a concession. A concession, a yeah. concession from Yan. Didn't have much else working in the hand. The one Radiant Greninja draw wasn't enough. No Professor Sada's vitality in the mix at all that game. What an impressive display in that game one situation from Bartosz. Oh, Give us the up. thumbs up. The electric ball knockout. You love to see it. And these are the intricate plays that are available in Maridon that kind of get swept under the rug. People think it's just this aggro archetype where if you don't get your tandem unit, you're not doing much. But Bartosz worked really well from a low hand there and uh, found a really nice winning line. I mean, it was aggro anyway. Just being oh, yeah. able to boss and <laughs> attach twice, one generator, just knock out the Squawk ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on the bench. And just from there, snowballing his way through just because Jan wasn't able to find those dark patches, <laughs> find those Sardas, and be able to sort of retaliate in the right manner.
Because it, yeah, it's just gouging on a Zapdos is... This is when you love the Pokemon trading card game. How <laughs> often do you see a Maridon have a board of just Zapdos and Zeraora and just happen to have boss's orders in hand to create the perfect board state when you're able to take Ultra Ball from prizes, completely change the game oh. off of that? We love this game because every single game in the Pokemon trading card game is so unique. And mm -hmm. what a great display of that. Even though Yan wasn't drawing on all cylinders, they had an awkward squawk ability, drew a lot of the, their energy cards, which is a shame. Um, but Bartosh was just in a really nice favorable prize exchange just from that one use of Zapdos. Yeah, and it's now on Yan to try and level up the game where possible. We're, we're only 13 minutes in to this <laughs> That's round. the matchup. <laughs> so this is, this, is, this is how we saw it, but not quite the prize race yeah. that, that we did. It's on Yan to try and bring it up. What's Yan's position? Will he choose to go first? Will that's he that's to go a big second? question. Uh, I don't think we've seen any stadium from Bartosz either. So if you choose to go second as Yan, that would be because you're not necessarily expecting Path to the Peak, so that you can try and launch that early attack, expect your opponent to lead a two-prize Pokemon or have a two-prizer available, mm -hmm. maybe even something you could rope into the active in the worst-case scenario. I think that's certainly reasonable from Yan, uh, but just due to the nature of the game and how it played out, you haven't actually seen everything in your opponent's deck yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I just don't like having the decision. I want it, <laughs> I want it made for me. What do you want to do? Because yeah, I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah. What, what would you like? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm Yan, I, I think I am choosing to go second here and just believing in the turbo nature of the archetype, mm -hmm. has four copies of energy switch as well as the uh, dart patches to help you get that initial attack off. Mm -hmm. So the judges are helping make sure everything is the right way up here. Nothing too crazy prize from both players. The Squawk could play a part uh, as Bartos does start the flap. He does choose to let Bartos start yeah, the I do game. agree. I definitely agree with this. I think it limits your opponent's options quite substantially. And even with the Squawk ability in the prize cards, that's even more so the case. Have we once again seen a flat hand here for Bartosz? Oh, no. No ball search for any Maridon. It's super rolled, a ton of energy, boss's orders. Forest of Stone once again without a target. Oh, no. Is it the attached pass? Oh, you hate to see it. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Rub your hands, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's go for the turn one attack. Jan, it's on you. Battle yeah. VIP pass to kick things off. Radiant Greninja available in the deck this time to kind of start bursting through. Just needs to hit the right combo of cards and can take game two in quick fashion. Well, we were expecting fireworks. <laughs> and we're getting it, but not the way we expected. Yeah, from, from the dark side this time. Yeah. Again, advantage here in this scenario, you at least. Think, you think Jan's in a pretty Ancient. good position. It does not take much to win the game at this stage. You can try and power up a benched Roaring Moon uh, with the Professor Sada's Vitality and with Dark Patches. There are four energy switch in this list. So there are so many ways that you can even get your active Roaring Moon to take a knockout this turn. We've even seen the more Peko uh, <laughs> considered from Jan very early on here. And that's another way that you can try and launch that 70 damage attack very early on. It's not a Sada target, but it's still easy Oh, let's see the hand. There's at least an energy switch in there. I saw more Ultra Ball as well. Yeah, more Peko. This and is looking Squawk, really... And the moon. Yeah, oh, we're getting so close many. already. And that's before Squawker Billy, I think. Ultra Ball, is that... Oh, there's so many I think cards. it's just energy switches. Two Ultra Balls in the hand mm -hmm. right now. So you can even thin a Pokemon if you want to. There's Luminion for a guaranteed Sada. It's going to be more Peko hitting the field for the Energizer wheel <laughs> as an option with turn attachment plus Dark Patch. I think we're seeing more single prizes hit the board. It almost feels like than than he is just being able to start swinging away as well. But Interesting more to simple. Way yeah. Of doing it. Interesting to shuffle up here. Maybe it means there's dark patch in the hand already. Oh, it's escape rope in the hand, so you give yourself a free retreat from Morpeko now. Mm -hmm. Give you those options. That certainly makes sense. Doesn't means it's not a dark patch target though. Yeah. But uh, Sada draws you cards as well, though, don't forget. We do, want, we do want to true. accelerate and draw cards. It's only one Darkness Energy in the discard pile right now. And again, there's Sada plus E-Switch. You always have to think that with four Energy Switch, the ratios change so much. There is a Professor Sada's. There's currently no Energy Switch in the hand. It's going to be a three-card dig here for just one Darkness Energy hitting the field. Again, feels like a bit of a low roll here for yeah. Yan so far. But let's see three more cards. Squawk and Squeeze has not been kind <laughs> so far. There's the attachment from the discard. Big three cards. Do we see energy switch among those three? Dark, Dark patch, patch isn't live. Is that Radiant Greninja, though? Radiant Greninja should get there. We can 
get rid of Darkness Energy with Radiant Greninja, retreat, Dark yeah. Patch, turn attach the water energy that's in hand, and thanks to the free retreat of Morpeko, we do have a very early 1-1 uh, here <laughs> for Yana. We're going to a game three, it's as and simple as that. That's game two, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to Pokemon. If uh, you're just joining us now, this is round seven of the Gdansk Regional. <laughs> Both players now 1-1 one, one after a very quick fire, unorthodox finish to both games. Um, but that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. We are about 30, oh, about 15, 16, maybe 17 minutes in. Plenty of time to go. <laughs> Will we need that time, Joe? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not, to be honest, Alex. Uh, there's, for all the plaudits we've given Paradox Rift, there has been a number of archetypes that have sprung out of the game that can take early wins. Mm -hmm. You mostly think of Iron Valiant. If there's a Mareep pass, you're normally expecting it's going to be some Tachyon bits dancing around the board for an early knockout. You don't always expect Maridon to be only having one Pokemon in play, but sometimes that happens, and we've got another new early tempo deck in the TCG from Roaring Moon, and sometimes just capitalizing on slow starts is why in a best 350 minute situation you're a very viable deck and despite Bartosz having a really clever intricate game plan game one and making something come together with an awkward hand all that work's been undone because he's oh. led with Marie pass but he does have the good news is he's got half an hour on the clock and he gets to choose whether or not to go first or second uh, in this game three which one again it's <laughs> like this time he's gone first twice he's yep. had two Bad start. We don't you, know who won the coin flip, obviously. Yeah, we gave a lot of kudos to uh, the deck so, being able to just get the mm -hmm. get going, and we yeah. haven't really seen that so Not far. Yet. <laughs> um, so, very interesting scenario again. It's a deck that has typically liked going second because I, you can start forcing mm. uh, the early aggression. I think it, I think going second as Maridon makes you draw well, though. Mm. I think because this deck list plays enough basic one prize Pokemon, yeah. it plays four of them. It has Zeraora, Zapdos, and Tomb Reap. I think you can create a board state with the amount of switch cards in the list as well that you can just force a single prize into the active and on the bench. So you're playing around Escape Rope quite, quite nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as it's not double Mareep, because then there can be a uh, Greninja two prize KO. That's something you have to be aware of. But you have seen Water Energy already yeah. in the set. So it's something you should be conscious of. I feel like Maridon going first has more win conditions here, because again, you can stick path to the peak, let's not Ooh, forget. Ooh, a couple of dark patches That's being prize isn't ideal. Um, then would have to be a bit more heavily reliant on Sada yeah. um, to get the energy on the board early doors. But again, Bartos is is that a, is that a mulligan? It looks like a looks mulligan like that was taken there with a one. Uh, could be a draw for turn. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, interesting. There you go. Bartos choosing second to try and get the first attack in this set. Jan might be pretty pleased with this, honestly. 230 hit points is a high threshold. Can limit the board so you that can, it's not yeah. taken. Well, Raikou's damage Raiko. is limited. limited. Yep. So if you get an early this. banked attachment anywhere, and that's helpful to you <laughs> in your endeavor. Will Bartosz regret that? Well, we, <laughs> we have to see. It, I, it's a tough call. I'm it still up here. Call. I'm weighing it up. And when your opponent is choosing to go second, maybe Bartosz was thinking it's more beneficial that I don't let Roaring Moon go second mm -hmm. than me going yeah. first. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. When you see your opponent choose second, making them go first is sometimes the right logic. That mind games. The mind games come in, Joe. We don't know. There's which not been many better. formats where it's been a real debate. <laughs> it's normally I won that coin flip. Yes, I'll go first. <laughs> see ya. Uh, but now, now that's not the case. Now it's a real discussion based on matchups and also based mm -hmm. on deck lists even. Uh, we can really debate this. Yeah, we, we can we can go all day. We can go oh, all yeah. day on this. And and yeah, decks decks have different preferences, but I mean even decks that typically do have oh, that evolution. Forget limiting the board. I'm, I'm grabbing all the guys. Going wide. Yeah, we see Squawkabilly and Morpeko now. Jan's been able to develop two single prize Pokemon, the only two in his deck list, <laughs> to uh, create that same situation where if Bartosz is going to take a knockout, it will only be a single prize knockout unless it's an Iron Hands. Ooh, <laughs> that's how it's you time. It. Is it time? <laughs> I feel like the Iron Hands is the Jaws music theme yeah. <laughs> when you start getting close. I'm, I'm expecting you to just start doing it. Yeah, I'm going to stop commentating down. and just doing the durdums <laughs> as, soon, as soon as Bartosz's turn starts. Uh, yep, yeah, it's gone wide. I mean, Raikou could take a, a massive knockout if it is fully wide with the five bench on both, board, both sides of the board and one of them is a Zapdos on Bartosz's side, of course, to help reach... We do see a Pokestop, another vital card in the stack to kind of push those energies into the discard and start ramping up. 
Yeah, you have a really huge number of item cards in your deck list, so you actually use this as like a pseudo draw supporter almost, but mm. also you're happy with the outcome of energy hitting the discard pile, so your ratios in that respect are even stronger. And we are going to see the Earthen Vessel, another great new card from Paradox Rift. You get to discard one card from your hand and get two energies out the deck. I say get to discard a card because sometimes that really helps you in your endeavor to bin off some energy cards to activate your Professor Sada I, I'm for having full a value. Quick look at Bartosz's hand, and it, it's not pretty again. Don't tell me it's another panic I fleet footage. I, I don't want to. <laughs> the poker stop could help him out, though. Poker stop could help. We've got things. But, but if there was nothing else, it might be a bit of a fleet footed option. Oh. And pray, but I could be wrong. It, I just saw. No caster curse. Cards. No caster curse. We'll ignore it for now. It's still Jan's <laughs> turn. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting Bartosz's ahead of myself. brick can't hurt us just yet. <laughs> Yeah, and still plenty of actions to go as we do see the concealed cards. Um, now for the first time, is it the first? No, second time in this round seven. It's going to be the spin the wheel of the poker stop. It's going to get moon. rid of a roaring moon, going to get rid of another poker stop and grabs a pal pad. Not exactly the card you're looking for straight away, but can be handy at times. I believe there actually is a Sada discarded from the early Scorpion Seas, so it's not the worst thing to see if you just want to reload one card, but you might want to sequence it a little mm -hmm. bit more cutely later on in the turn, maybe if you've used a poker stop before power padding again, just in case, that sort of thing. But it is going to be a switch cards. Small protection into the more Peko. Yeah, let's As see one see. card for Bartosz. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> Not like this. The Zapdos comes down very quickly. Is that a... Why is Boss's it? Orders the only card? It's <laughs> the only always supporter. seen, isn't it? This is a big fleet-footed here. Oh, there's another it's a switch. Yeah. Is that a research in hand as their last supporter? I can't see with so much glowing going yes, on. There is a lot of full arts there. At the same time, does still have access to Pokestop as well. Is it Arvin, well. possibly? It's definitely a full art of some description. If it's Arvin, we're, we're looking good. Yeah. The fact that we're debating a generator before anything else makes me think it's looking bad. Oh, there's a Pokestop again. There's an energy. Show us a ball search card here. No. Oh. Three misses. Ooh, that's zero for free oh, in the Pokestop. Oh, wow. The deck doesn't quite play as many item cards as Roaring Moon, but it still plays a decent chunk. It's going to be an electric generator here. Oh, this is... I mean, if we see two, oh, we could we once again... Two, yeah, we, we could <laughs> Wait go a minute. again. <laughs> it's happening once again. Two! Oh. This is it. Do we, could we, do, could we have, a, could we have a switch? Card? Uh, <laughs> not again. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> Just going to figure out, actually debating, do I play both? There's Switch, there's Energy, and there's Bosses Orders in hand. It could oh. be another Zapdos 2 prize KO here. My, oh my. Is this the game we're playing? Sometimes it hits. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> that completely what? changes the script. What's a Moridon? What's an Iron Hands? <laughs> Let's go Quad Zapdos. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> this is phenomenal from Bartosz. Suddenly, two... Energies from the electric generator completely changes what's available this turn. Was not an oh, expected turn, but it's opened up for him. Switch into the active, boss in hand. It's what you got to do. These are the plays you got to make. This Give is me the scorecabili. Incredible. Wow. Zapdos has taken four prizes <laughs> it's the in best. this series. This is actually a Zapdos deck, and that's what you have <laughs> yeah. to remember. You normally expect this card to hit the field to help you hit 230, not to use Electric Ball <laughs> for four prizes, but it's working out for Bartosz. Not much help from the prizes yeah, either. I don't want to spoil the party, but <laughs> this is really helping him kick off the first two prizes of this game three and going up in the set. Was that? I'm still, I'm still concerned about what that full art supporter was in that hand. Or full art, it, is, it is a professor's it research. Is a research. Just didn't want to play it. Went for, the generator first, the generator? went for the generator first and said that if I hit, that's a better play. Arguably, arguably. We're going to see a Professor Sada's Vitality for Yan get both Roaring Moon with a Darkness Energy, as well as three additional cards here. For Yan, feels like you want to go for a Raikou V. The Zapdos mm. is something you kind of want to ignore, I would say. Even though you're taking all the energy off the board, in terms of your prize race, it's not helping out too much. Yeah, having to try and hit into the, another cross switcher or the S1 escape rope, escape rope that Jan plays just to kind of take out the Raikou V would be ideal. Doesn't have to use Frenzy Gouging. There is a supporter in play as well. Stadium, yeah. So dealing 220 damage with the second attack there. Ooh, Luminium the being Luminium targeted. V to the hand. Just could be thinned before using your Radic Greninja as well, of course. I think there's not much jeopardy around this attack. Could also be improving your ratios for Pokestop. Still a lot of cards to see here for Jan, of course. 
Uh, but looking towards the likes of Escape Rope is pretty massive, I think, this turn. There's one cross switcher currently in the hand. So another way to grab out the another cross switcher, not. We've got the Poker Stop and we've got Radiant Greninja to draw a few here. This is the only energy in hand, uh, but you do have energy switch. Mm -hmm. So if you don't draw into any more energy, you can still get something going. Couldn't quite see there, but there's another energy switch, another Sada, not helpful. Oh, just a few cards there. Energy going, no escape rope. So Yan may be forced for another single prize Pokemon here. The good news is you're a 290 hit point Roaring Moon, <laughs> and you're not having to frenzy gout through the Zapdos Very this time, true. which is pretty big. Very true. With but Calamity Storm, can you choose not to discard the stadium? You can choose not to, but you wouldn't be getting the KO. Yeah, that's very true. There's the E-Switch. I feel like there's a lot of a lot of lost value here from some of these cards. What else can but you do? If you don't hit the other Cross Switcher, the one that's in hand does nothing. Whiffing on the Escape Rope also feels pretty bad. Taking three energy off the board is relevant for Raichu, and taking Zapdos off the board is relevant for mm -hmm. math fixing as well. So taking the prize isn't great in terms of the race, but it is granting you a lot of value. Yeah, there's Let's a real back and forth here. I, I don't think there's much in that hand. Well, we know research, there's the Professor's Research. But there's a lot of pieces there. Yeah, there's a Super Rod, there's a Generator. I don't know if we have any Ball Search to actually get the board rolling. No, I don't believe so. Straight away, the Super Rod for the Zapdos. Definitely makes sense, because we've just mentioned that even its ability is really handy. Mm. Well, that's what it's in there for, Yeah, right? <laughs> that's normally why it's in here. Yeah. I attack with it a lot in the Gardevoir matchup to be nah, a prize yeah. offset. Okay. But the fact that Squawk Ability is such an important card in the meta does make the Zapdos even more valuable. Oh, man, just having to think maybe that play was worked so well in that game one. Yeah. To go for it again in game three. And I mean, it's working nicely. You're two prizes up as long as you can work towards another two prize KO. I know it's a lot harder this time around, mm. but it's possible. Fleet footed first. Fleet footed before the professor's research is interesting. You've just put back some energy cards. Grabs the Maridon, Grabs the Maridon though. Huge. That's a monster hit. I Tandem think there's also unit. the. Is there another generator in this hand? No, there's not. But you can get a bravery charm onto one of your favorite targets here. You can start thinning the deck also. Does have the Lost Vacuum in hand as well. Another yep. card that's quite vital for sort of being able to match um, what Jan is doing on his side with this sort of additional HP that that Ancient Booster Capsule is providing. Yeah, I really like this choice of second Miraidon EX as well as Zero Aura. It means you can get a second tandem unit this turn. I think no doubt we're going to see a Mareep come down. As long as we have access to it, I know one was in the prize cards, but I think we should be able to access the other yeah, here. Wasn't able to. Su did he super rod it back? I'm oh, chose sure two energy instead. Okay, yeah. so just going all in on generators here. So it's just a Zapdos, just Zapdos. the one, keeping one space available. Just double checking because this is the first deck search. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe two prizes up, but hasn't actually done much in terms of seeing cards for the deck. It's surprised to not see that second Raikou V selected here. Yeah, just double checking those Flaffies are available. Uh, Mew is still in there as well as a fail-safe. Yeah, um, that's the main part. the main reason why you wouldn't grab Raikou. But Raikou is the best thing that you could grab in terms of accelerating onto possibly this turn. You could even just look to Bravery Charm your active Raikou here mm -hmm. and sponge and start powering up some Maridon in the back. Kind of force that awkward option of uh, Frenzy Gouging where possible yeah, as well. Exactly. If you can weave that in, it's huge. You will so. have to proactively lost vacuum here. We switch into our free retreater. So I guess that's why that second Raikou wasn't necessary for the moment. I feel like Bravery Charm uh, and Maridon is a really good play here, as well as turn attachment. So we see a lightning go. Yeah. Again, it's all about value, right? You want to get as much value out of these energy mm -hmm. cards as possible. You do play a lot because you play Electric Generator, but you want to make use of all of the attachments where possible because you might just miss one. There, mm -hmm. you know, you called it. There's a Bravery Charm. 270 HP now. Yeah, force the Frenzy Gouging. I like this attachment as well. You're giving yourself that fallback as we see Professor's Research. Because we don't have Flaffy available at the moment with one in the discard pile, one in the prize cards, there's going to be some heavy lifting from the generator. Yeah. There's already one come to the hand. Still a few more cards to draw here from Professor's Research. So just one more to hit the seven. One generator, two lining in hand. That nest ball as well. You can try and weave in Mew X as well. Now, I don't think you can lower your hand size to draw cards, but it could be another option for you. Just to increase those percentages just ever so slightly. Does Never tell me the odds. <laughs> We're not going to take a Pokemon out of the deck. We're just going generator instead. Here we go. 
We're gambling. I think that was a big exhale from Bartosz there. Oh, just, the just the one hit. It's not ideal. Obviously, it's better than none, but... Again, committed to that Moreno on EX. Yeah, I'm sat on a large hand size, which is why Bartosz is pausing here, whether or not to commit all to one Maraidon. But in the end, does choose to go for this. Not hoping that a frenzied gouge would at least give him a line to attack with something cheaply next turn. Yeah, of course. It's, it's just a, looks like it's just a pass, yep. keeping the free retreater in the active. I think this makes sense. Um, so that you are at least forcing cards from Yan here. Make them have the... Lost Vacuum plus Cross Switcher combo. Mm -hmm. Also happened at the stadium in hand. I mean, we can see that there's a lot of those pieces already developed, but yep. uh, it wasn't guaranteed, and Bartosz has at least got to see it to believe it. It's going to be an Ultra Ball early here. Getting rid of possibly Sada and Iono. Surely there's less valuable cards in this hand, <laughs> even with... Well, there is the... Uh, Sada and Pokemon. The Pal Pad in hand, so you can get rid of the Sada knowing that you're going to reload with it. It's going to be optimal for Mew EX. Mm -hmm. Just maybe thinking of just trying to limit what Bartos is able to do with an Iona, maybe. I think because you have so many of your cross switches at the bottom portion of this deck, that possibly even just going for Iono proactively now, give Bartos only four cards to work with, and say that because three of your four cross switches are still in that portion, that you can Iono plus Pokestop and still have good odds. Still have Greninja. As still have well. Greninja draw also, yeah. So ton of energy still in the middle of this deck. A few different options available. No, let's see the Pokestop the poke proactively. Stop. You could also just hit cross, uh, cross switcher now. No, just the no. battle VIP pass. <laughs> Couple darkness energy. Pokestop has not been kind for either player now. Well, there was still one Sada kept, so you can continue to dig here. Again, we're still trying to work desperately towards <laughs> these cro the second cross switcher has been so elusive right now. Does have an E-switch in hand, maybe? Yeah, so there's four um, energy on the active, but you can sort of fix that with uh, energy switches. I see it. Vessel, Dark Patch, and a Dark Energy, I believe. That's a crazy miss. <laughs> Honestly, to be forced into a single prize knockout, it's fine, because you've already taken a single prize mm. knockout, but you just have to be wary of this next Maridon yeah, coming in. You just haven't limited the board on your yeah. opponent's side, so it's that's that's the scary thought right now, because you, it's not as if you're attacking with a single prize of yourself, you're having to use and utilize your own EX, your own two prizer, yeah. which just doesn't feel great. Things could still work out okay, because even if Maridon does come in for a revenge knockout on this Roaring Moon, hmm. um, you could then go for the Iono down to two cards, and maybe hope that things are tricky from that stage. So I don't think Yan is necessarily out of this game by any stretch, but it's definitely a slower turn, and had better lines this turn, had they been able to find any of their cross-switcher combinations. Calamity Storm not actually taking the KO without discarding Yeah, that's another the resource well. that's frustrating, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's not going to... It's not going to be great, but sometimes you just have to. Yeah, I don't see a better play here. Also debate whether or not to even bench this Mew EX. I mean, you can do it now, possibly, but you want it to be a safeguard. It's still got Greninja? Yeah, it still has Greninja draw. It's discarded a lot of their darkness energy at this point, though. But I guess you're saying these last two Roaring Moon are your last prizes. Yeah. Does he hit it? That was an escape rope, escape but rope. only into Zapdos, maybe. That, that's a better prize to take. Kind of limiting that attack power of the Maridon EX. Yeah. And Yan doesn't play Lost Vacuum in the deck list, so can't deal with the one Pokemon with energy on. Could still take a two-prize oh, knockout. there we go. Sorry, I didn't see. They'd have the double uh, so, cross switches. Oh, so hit from the Greninja in the end. So can Frenzy Gouge. No Mareep down, which yep. means limiting. I, I think this is actually pretty solid because you basically force Bartosh into using Battle Claw. And then you still have your stadium in play. You can do the Iono next time around, knowing that they're still going down to two prizes. And you're happy to take a single prize knockout mm. in that case. So as awkward as the frenzied gouging is here, in the immediate future, you're kind of laying the trap that an Iono can swing things back in your favor. Yeah, because you've got another attacker ready to go on the bench. But Jan does take the initiative here, going down to three prizes in this final game of round seven. Bartosz needs to find a way to best set up the board if he is able to take a care with the Battle Claw as well. Yeah, it could actually be better for them to <laughs> use a chunkier Pokemon, actually. Yeah. If you can find another Bravery Charm, stick that onto an EX Pokemon, it could be massive. Don't make it so easy uh, yeah. to take the knockout. 
but of course the resources are stringent now. You've gone through a couple of your generators. Mm -hmm. There's no backup uh, of Flaffy or Marip here, which is usually so vital. Uh, so it's still going to be tough. You have these two laid out for you, but where the rest of the prizes come from? It's going to have to be more generator hits in this endgame scenario. And of course, with the poker stop still in play, not wasting any resources there. You need, to keep the, yeah, you need to keep those lightning energy in the deck for your <laughs> ratios. Anytime you miss one of those, it's really rough. Yeah, like I said, I gave it a disservice. There's more intricacies than I thought they'd be. Oh but yeah, just based on how the game played out. Pokemon gets scrappy, really. man. That's this, <laughs> that's the format in a nutshell. Things really do get scrappy. Oh my! It seems oh so my. simple. These everyone says that the game can be three or four turns, but when you're at these top tables, you don't get to these records without knowing the ins and outs of your deck Not and forcing all. the most from the opponent. So you see no target there from the tandem unit. Still has a ton of ball search if they mm -hmm. want to Still. actually grab things in the end. It's going to be an attachment to the Raikou V. So, if it, so maybe we are hunting for the bravery charm. If you can do the most upfront this mm -hmm. turn, it means that you need the least amount of cards next turn. Uh, cards sounds cool. sounds pretty obvious, but um, it's going to help you in your endeavor here. Does have to hit a generator to yeah. be able to swing. That's the that is the awkward thing about this play. It looks like it's going to be a professor's research as well. So be drawing a lot of cards. Yeah, you have professor's research and the poker stop if you whiff initially from Generator. So let's see seven cards straight away here. How many energy do we see? Zero so far. Okay, these are really good for your race. There's the Bravery yeah, Charm the bravery as well. Charm. Two more. Oh, and There's the generator. generator. No energy? One energy. One energy. Okay, I think there's still a healthy amount in the deck here to go for this line. Here we go. If you can Bravery Charm up this Raikou, it is the best thing you can do here, I feel. Yeah. Force Yan into another Frenzied Gouge, which exactly. means you're just a Lightning Energy away from the game. This back and forth is just not what I expected. Let's see the big five cards here. Here's the two, two hit. <laughs> In reality, of course, can only take the two. Yep, swing can. on to Maridon. Why not? Yeah, this is. is th does this put Bart on? It's not quite a checkmate scenario. No, it definitely. Like, we knew that Yan was going to set the Iono trap. But the fact that Bartosz is going for the Bravery Charm right now mm -hmm. means that, that trap is far less powerful. This is a really great way to safeguard yourself by being proactive with the Maraidon yeah, on deck. Definitely. And needing as few cards to close as possible. Really smart stuff. You can see a fleet footed before anything else. Get more information. Yeah, definitely the, love this Bravery Charm. There's the charm. And that's the downside of the Roaring Moon deck, right? Your pick, your caster prediction. <laughs> slight, oh, don't slight have a, nuance here. Not you now, just have to Alex. Take so, so much damage to yourself by taking KOs. <laughs> At least wait until it's lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's in a good well, it's set Here up, we right? go. Here we go. It's the Lightning big. Rondo. Bartosz is going down to two prize cards remaining. Here's the state of is play. There, is Jan there, go on. Is there any way that. Is there an escape rope still in the hand? Yeah, they right. could. So Yan could still go for a cross switcher play or an escape rope play. Take one prize this turn without wasting without, damage. Yeah, without frenzied yeah. gouging, and you still put Bartosz in a really tough position. Mm -hmm. The issue is you want to Iono. You can't draw that many cards. You can't make it all happen if you just go Iono here. Yeah, this is. There's still a number of cross switches in the deck, so you can go Iono and hope that Poker Stop helps you get there. And I thought I saw the escape rope in the hand as well. Uh, yeah, I think that was the final card from Greninja last turn. Yeah, it is in the hand. Yeah, there's a, there's a shiny escape rope there. So we want to see, let's thin out some of these dark patches, maybe even throw it on more Peko at this point, after using escape rope. Ooh. You take either one or two prizes, you don't mind at that yep. stage. Ideally, your opponent feeds you the Zapdos, then you're even safer. There's the escape rope play. I feel so. like you should feed Zera Aura here. The Maridon is functioning as a retreat costing Pokemon, mm -hmm. as is the Raikou. So I think Zera Aura is the least valuable card here. Yep, seems like the right, the more sensible decision yep. uh, in this scenario. There here comes Roaring, Roaring Moon. Moon. It's ready to Calamity Storm for a single prize knockout. Yep. Play down your hand, go for the Iono. Hope that this Roaring Moon is too large. That's the game plan for Yan at this stage. You can develop Mew EX if you want to, but that puts you in range of boss's orders plays. Things can get a little bit funky. So you may even hold on to that as well. It's just going to be the Iono. Massive here. Bartosz, I really like that, by the way. It's a tiny detail, but making sure you know what's exactly yeah. is at the bottom of your deck is really important. Completely agree. For players at home. 
Yeah, knowing what's going to the bottom, knowing with tandem unit, you can shuffle it back up if yeah, you need to hit exactly. something specific. Yep. Um, really cool tip, really cool thing that we see a lot of players, um, top players start to do. Battle VIP bar, switch cards. It's ultra, ultra ball. ball, yeah. So that's cards. decent for next turn. You could also poke a stop if you want to. Just try and get that last bit of value. You know your Mui X is at the bottom of the deck. Oh, there goes the Ancient Boost. That was the safest thing you can go for yeah, there. Yeah, that was... That if you could been, have boosted, that would have been huge. In the same way that we said Bravery Charm on the Raikou would have been massive, yeah. that capsule would have been huge. Because now a Maridon EX with the bonus damage of Zapdos can finish off this Roaring Moon as we see the Calamity Storm taking down the Zero Aura. Yan going to two prize cards remaining. And we're getting to a thrilling end game position here. This it's going it. to be top deck plus fleet footed for Bartosz to see if they can get their last generator. And if it hits, it will be the game. This is it. There's the Ultra Ball, Lightning Energy, double turbo energy, not what Bartosz is looking for. You can fleet foot now, turn attached to the Maridon, then Ultra Ball for Mew EX and draw three cards. Ooh, with so many little things. He's gone for the attachment first as well. Which means Here's we're the definitely fleet footing. Into. Is it Arvin? Is that an Arvin? Looks like an Arvin. <laughs> it's oh, an Arvin. Arvin. <laughs> Arvin guarantees generator. It could also give you fodder. Oh, you have. Oh, you still have Forest Stone available. So if there's Raichu in the deck, you could unit out a target for your Raichu. Sorry, you could unit for out Forest Raichu Stone? for Forest Hill Stone. But it's literally only one uh, one generator left in the deck, I believe. At a max. Yeah, and the super odds played already, there I believe. Is. Two energies. Is that two? Two lightning energies <laughs> in there? It's not a lot. We've already it's played the rod. Three energies, it looks like, maybe. It's quite a, quite a chunky deck left. Are we going to end up forest seal stoning just to <laughs> get rid of anything that's not an energy <laughs> out of here before using a generator? It's so many little things. You definitely unit out two lightning Pokemon. That's mm -hmm. always happening at this stage. Doesn't matter what they are. The Marip was taken from prizes last turn, and Iono to the bottom. That's coming out. Iron Hands might be cheering us on from the sidelines here. Yeah. None of that amp you very much. Oh, really just decisions. Yeah, you Take always go right, right you, yeah, so you can arm them for a Forest Hill Stone. We are shuffling up, but I'm pretty sure we're going back into this deck. We'll be grabbing Forest Hill Stone and Generator. And then we'll be Forest Hill Stoning for anything that can thin the deck. Maybe you could grab access to Mubi X, but I don't think any card draw helps you at this stage. I think you're literally no, just you setting your stall out for generator win or go. You don't want home. you don't want to be you don't <laughs> want to be drawing into those lightning energies and reducing yeah. um, the chances. And there are only three there. Proactive Forest of Stone for path or something along those lines just to make it harder in case you miss, but that doesn't matter now. You would just retreat into a Mareep anyway. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Five big, big cards from Electric Generator. Bartosz wins on the spot with a Lightning Energy here. Final card from the Electric Generator. We do see... Yes, one, it's a just hit! Just one. It's massive. That should be able to... Bartosz the game. takes the third game with a hit on the final electric generator, paying retreat the Raikovi into the Maridon, the plus 10 damage from Zapdos. And I think that was the MVP of this set. Zapdos, <laughs> yeah, taking four prizes. Yeah. With just without even needing too much as well. I mean, on game one, just setting up with the board, two single prizes, incredible. But Photon Blaster is able to, <laughs> the, the game winning or round winning attack there, dealing 230 damage to that Roaring Moon EX. What an exciting set. And I think <laughs> many people would have thought when they saw Roaring Moon come up against Maridon, it was going to be simple. It was going to wow. end. I tell you what, it was nothing but. Uh, Bartosz there, what an incredible display with Maridon. Backs against the wall plays, but really pulling out some incredible turns, knowing to thin the deck very well, knowing what attackers were required in the right situation, having real good grasp on the prize map as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, a really impressive display from Miraidon coming out on top against Roaring Moon and going to a 6-0-1 record. Yeah, incredible. Locking himself into day two with 19 points already. Now the final two rounds giving himself an opportunity yeah. to try and push himself as close as possible. But of course, Jan still in a good position. 5-1-1. Yeah. One, one. Uh, still plenty to play for with the final two rounds to come. But congratulations again to Bartosz in making and winning that round seven. Yeah, it was an absolute thriller. It was great to see the intricacies of this matchup. Both players have just enough single prize Pokemon to make it tricky here and there. We didn't get to play Pat -a Cake with Iron Hands, unfortunately. Uh. We've been waiting for that all day. We'll have to try and get that tomorrow, perhaps. Uh, but everything was 
doing its job. We got to see how Zero Aura got into the mix. Mm -hmm. You know, didn't even need to attack, but the option was there. Zapdos certainly pulled its weight. Seeing the Raikou and the Raichu both being great endgame scenario cards as well. Um, just being a fantastic combination. We didn't really see the value of Path to the Peak. I think that is one note to take from this deck list that when you only play two copies, you don't play the Judge. You're not quite as in control as mm -hmm. you were with the previous list of Miraidon pre Paradox Rift because you just have to shove in so many cards for the Iron yeah. Hands to sort of accommodate it. But they were still there. They were still talking points. There were still ways to gain percentages. Uh, but in the end, it was uh, coming down to some highlight reel moments of Electric Generator. <laughs> Turns out it is all about that card. Yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a massive gambling gamble card <laughs> to be able to draw into those energies, right? You're already reducing the number of energies in the deck because you're taking more out, you're attacking yeah. energies. And there was only like three, maybe out of sort of 15 cards that were in the deck there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Bartos was able to thin out the deck take the right cards out and just kind of make his percentages as high as possible. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed that. Make sure you guys let us know in the comments just whether maybe Moraidon could take down yet another tournament as well, just using that hashtag well, yeah. play Pokemon. Unfortunately for Joe, another Roaring Moon just taking a bit of a little loss, but oh. can, still, can still make it. Let's, can still make yeah, it. Yeah, still a great record and I think put on a decent display. I mean, there was a really awkward squawkabilly where you just can't really do much from that and you kind of shake it off. I know you are playing mm. a decent amount